Thunderbirds Hockey. I'm Drew Blevins, joined by Kelly Curl. As tonight on Mascot Mania Night, the Carolina Thunderbirds host the Delaware Thunder for the middle two games of a six-game homestand. Kelly, these two teams haven't seen each other in quite a while. The beginning of November, to be specific, they have both changed drastically, but it should be fun to see what they bring to the table tonight. Oh, it's absolutely going to be a blast. One of the things I'm most excited about is to see how Carolina responds to a traditionally physical Delaware team. Well, the Delaware Thunder come into this game 8-17, 0-0, 24 points. They are the seller of the Eastern Division. Meanwhile, in stark contrast, Carolina is 21-3, 1-1, taking five of six points away from the men or icebreakers last weekend. They remain the top of the Federal Prospects Hockey League as they are driving to make the playoffs before the month's end. It'll be Ryan Marker to start at center. On the outside will be Thomas Municello and Brandon Contrato. The forward line for Carolina is Connor Haas, Joe Osaka, and Steve McIntyre. Our officials are Josh Fay and Brian Skelly on the bands with Chris Kwong and Jeremy Moody on the lines. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this one between Carolina and Delaware from Winston-Salem. Osaka with a quick shot, rebound loose. Aaron Taylor tries to swallow it. He's knocked flat of his back as Carolina has it up at the point. Shoveled toward the net off of Municello. He backhands a pass all the way ahead, intended for Contrato. Intercepted Osaka, overskates the puck, trying to stay on side and does, but has to regroup to center. Carolina deb excuse me, debuting new black uniforms tonight with the white numericals, red and white trim, Delaware in their road whites. Into the middle, Martin winds for a shot. This deflects sky high up into the meshing out of play, giving us a whistle with 19.21 to go in the first period. Your local First Bank branch offers top-of-the-line banking services, including business and personal banking, mortgages, and wealth management. Visit localfirstbank.com to learn more here in the First Bank first period. Kelly Curl, Patrick Polivka, net for Carolina, Aaron Taylor for Delaware. Good matchup tonight between the pipes. It's definitely going to be a good one, and I'm excited to see who answers the bell. Up to the point, held by Stan Bacour. He floats a long wrist shot, blocked in the sea of bodies in front and skated back out by the Delaware Thunder. Dumped in as Polivka goes back behind his net to play the puck. Is taking the hit on the play was Evgeny Demon. Moved up to Daniel Martin, who's the head man. Two on one defensively as he crosses the attacking blue line. Waiting for reinforcements. Moved the puck to the near side for Joe Cangelosi as he's shoveled away by Kieran Devine. Devine goes into the corner with him. Held for a moment by Jan Krivalovic, who moves it back up for Cangelosi. He tries to dump it in. Taken away. Devine works all the way to the outside for Christers Bormanis, a recent acquisition. He drops it back for a long shot that floats well wide as Demon's bid was denied. This is Dominic Faith, the defenseman, gaining the red line. He didn't quite make it there, and this will be icing against Carolina as just ahead of the play for Delaware was Brian Dunford. You know him quite well. College teammates, as a matter of fact. I do. Uh, Brian was a very good hockey player in college. He's one of those guys that's kind of a stable body, and uh, he's going to give you a very good presence at the blue line. McIntosh will take the draw for Delaware. He'll be opposed by Peter Panachik, who, get this, broke an 0 for 31 streak on the power play for Carolina. They had not scored a power play goal since December 31st until he scored against Menor last Saturday. Good battle at the blue line. Jan Salak reaching ahead for it, tried to work around Masters. McIntosh takes it and dumps it back in. Polivka sets it up on a tee as Dominic Fate comes back to it. He'll stick handle behind his own net. Looks near side for Jan Salak, goes off the boards as Charlie Penns Jr. dumps it back in. He is the coach's uh, son and a native of Delaware. Stan Vlasov gets it and snaps a pass through the middle. Panacha comes back near side left wing. Salak crossing the blue line. A wrist shot goes off of Penns as Salak slides hard into the boards. Now up for Eric Masters. He carries it in. Deeks to the left wing, loses possession as Kenny moves it up. Here's Salak coming down the left side. His pass through the middle stretches too far for Osaka and out wide to receive it. There's a couple of defensemen for the Delaware Thunder as Nikita Sedenko moves it ahead. Dumped into the zone, chased by Connor Haas as Brendan Contrato pressures. This is Daniel Klonetsky, spanks it up the far side boards. Osaka sustains a body check, well defended by Devine. 
as Haas has to come back to it and spins it back. Patrick Polivka has it in his goal crease, and he will cover. Polivka's girlfriend is actually in town for these contests this weekend. Always fun when you get a chance to have family members, friends, and significant others travel long distances to come see you play this great game. Especially for the guys that are traveling from overseas because that's such a special thing to be able to share this environment with family and friends. It'll be Marker to take the draw here. He loses it to Haas, but quickly has some help from teammates to regain possession. Through the middle, McIntyre kicks it ahead toward his stick. He's stick-checked there by Kieran Devine. Skated in by Ryan Marker. Looks for Contrato, but could never drop the pass as it's intercepted and coming the other way is George Holt. To the near side, Connor Haas sends it low. Osaka twirls it back toward the front. Devine breaks up the pass. Coming back to it, Holt misses. And Delaware gets to the puck in the near corner. Good hit by Connor Haas as he gets hard into one of the last men back, who was Bryce Litke. Litke now battles for the puck. McIntyre comes in to jostle the puck free, and he'll send it down the left wing side. Contrato to it for Delaware. Backhands a pass to the far side. This is Devine through the middle for Marker. He calls for it again and gets it for Municello. Marker fires a quick wrist shot, affected by Klinetsky. It goes well wide, and the other Daniel, that's Martin, will break it out. A head man look broken up on the way through and we're going to get a hand pass called by the low side official who is Josh Fate gives us a whistle with 1620 to go in this first period still sore, uh, still scoreless between Carolina and Delaware you know we got to see Brian Dunford there actually step up the blue line and one of those things that he does very well is he's very patient so he's not gonna leave too early and he's gonna hold his ground as long as he can Face-off is won by Carolina as Everett Thompson tries to pin it up on the boards, looking to shovel it away. Demon got a stick check in on it. Dunford can't catch up to it, and here comes Carolina. This is Daniel Martin, chopped down, but he is offside with 16.09 remaining in the opening frame. One of the things I'm seeing from Delaware is I think they're, they're backing in a little bit more than they're really going to want to against Carolina, and once we start to take advantage of that space, we can create some opportunities. Well, you had mentioned to me that Delaware really wants to try to force Carolina to dump the puck in. Why is that so critical in this contest? So when you're playing a team like Carolina that does a very good job of offensive possession, especially when they're on the rush and you have guys that can shoot the puck, if they have to dump it, it gives you the ability to create one-on-one -on -one battles, which you hope to win. High off the glass goes Litke. It'll be corralled by a mo for a moment by Evgeny Demon. He turns it over to Cangelosi, who dumps it in on to Aaron Taylor. He'll backhand it, and Delaware tries to break out on the far side. Good hit by Bacor as the puck comes through the middle. Could be a two-on-one if they hurry. Evgeny Demon holding his pass to the outside. Great stop, Polivka. It's behind him and steered out of harm's way. Backhanded toward the net and punched out. Meanwhile, Evgeny Demons tied up with Everett Thompson in the back play. Carolina gets it back out to center. A stupendous opportunity for Anton Kalinin, who is one of three players on this team in the double-digit category in goals. But Polivka with a good stop with a blocker early. That was a very well-executed pass there, Drew. This is Jan Krivolavik who spins out of trouble and finds Jan Salak. Dipsy doodles around Charlie Penz and goes into the left wing corner. Fumbles the puck, comes back to get it, holds on his forehand and finds Krivolavik. Krivolavik skates out of the left wing corner, moves it up to the top for Vlasov. His shot was blocked on the way through. Charlie Penz gets to it and finds Masters, who backhands it out to center, where it's intercepted by Jan Krivolavik as he turns for Vlasov. Through the middle of the ice, Peter Panacic skates by his man, but Penn sends it right back up the near side boards toward McIntosh. Overtaken by Vlasov, who shoots it out to the far side. Krivalovic takes it, drops a pass for Salak, who turns away from a body check into the middle, tipped toward the net, and a good stop made initially, I believe, by the leg of Charlie Penns. Behind the net, Penns gets to it, shoots it all the way around the boards, looking for Kieran Devine, who corrals on his forehand and lifts it the length of the ice. If it reaches the goal line, it should be icing. No, they're going to say it was tipped on the way back through. Up toward Jay Kenny, it goes off the heel of his stick, so no icing once again as Litke retrieves it. He turns it over to Osaka as McIntyre punishes him, and now we're going to see a penalty called on McIntyre as he and Kieran Devine get together in the far side corner. Meanwhile, we've got to keep an eye on Evgeny Demon, who has still not gotten up from his knees. You know, Big Mac is a, is a very large body there coming behind the net, and if you're not turned and ready to go, it's going to hurt. Training staff's going to have a look at Evgeny Demon. It's going to be boarding against McIntyre. 
Drew, was that boarding or was that a charge? I thought he said it was charging. I may, is, have, I may have misread the signal. Which is a bit strange because if you watch Mac, he's very much a glide to contact kind of guy. And there's just so much mass in that situation. McIntyre will be escorted to the penalty box here. And he's going to make what is going to be a legitimate argument here. Was the hit illegally delivered or was it hard? And it is very good to see Evgeny Demin. And I, I may have gotten this number wrong, and I have. It's actually Bryce Litke who took the brunt of that collision, 15 not 5 So Litke is back to the Delaware bench. But to finish that point, as an official, this is where the job becomes completely unenvious. You have to judge at high speed, is a check delivered illegally or is it just delivered hard? And in that case, that's one of those where I don't want to have to be in the position to make the call that Josh Fay and Brian Skelly do. No, and you take a guy like Steve McIntyre, who's so big, and I mean, he's rolling in here at roughly around 250, 260 pounds. That's a lot of body when you talk about a collision, especially one that's stationary against the boards. And you're right. This is going to be a charging call against McIntyre. It puts Carolina on the Wake Forest Baptist Health penalty kill. Wake Forest Baptist Health provides the official team doctors to the Carolina Thunderbirds. To learn more about the quality medical care offered at Wake Forest Baptist Health, visit wakehealth.edu. Good start to the kill for Carolina as this is Evgeny Demon who comes to the near side toward Kalinin. Drops for Contrato, who punches out to the far side. Penn braces for contact as Holt takes it away and clears at the length of the ice. Getting to the puck is Joe Osaka. He's going to send a pass all the way back to his defensive blue line for Klinetsky. He'll play pitch and catch with George Holt. This is interesting. The special teams for Carolina and Delaware have not been particularly good. The power plays are only separated by two-tenths of a percent. Both teams in the bottom half of the FPHL. Holt gets to it, smacks it around the boards. This will be held up at the point. Walking in and sending a pass low. The Delaware Thunder looking for a shot toward the net. Paddled away on a good play as Daniel DeCristofaro was looking for a shot from the point. Here comes Carolina the opposite direction. Everett Thompson works around it to Cristofaro with a wrist shot. Good stop by Taylor as he worked to the outside. Demon into Cristofaro, battle in the far side corner. As getting his stick tied up in the skates was DeCristofaro, no call. Crowd wanted one. Marker comes back through center. Stick handling, works to his forehand side, shovels a pass on his backhand around toward Killeen, and he lets it go for Contrato. Down the near side half wall. Held for a moment here by the Thunder as they try to set up the power play. Just 25 seconds left in it. Killeen moves it back behind the net. Marker feeds the point. De Cristofaro fakes the slap shot. Drew Thompson out of position and feeds it back down low. Walking back behind, this is Evgeny Demon on the near side. Feeds it low for Kalinin, who moves it for Contrato once more. He'll stick handle deeper into the corner as Delaware continues to circle. No real opportunities here. Good hit by Bacours. He knocks Kalinin off the puck. Delaware gets to it, and Carolina has killed the penalty. Shot back toward the net in front. Kalinin couldn't corral it. Poked around to Polivka as it stays out of the net, and Carolina gets to it. Coming back through center, McIntyre on his horse, but DeCristofaro is waiting there. Sends a pass back through the middle of the ice. Marker gets to it. Backhands for Anton Kalinin. Through the middle of the ice, Marker now. Works out wide and gets it right back. Low shot. Polivka says no, punching it out. Nikita Sedenko onto the puck. Finds Kalinin directly behind a Polivka. Shovels one toward the front of the net. A bouncing puck in front. Taken away by Carolina. They'll send a bouncing puck all the way down. This will be icing against the Thunderbirds with 11.24 to go in the first period. A whole lot of movement there by the Delaware Thunder, but not creating a lot of scoring opportunities on that power play. You know, that was a very, very patient uh, example of cycling down in the corner by Delaware. And it's something that not a lot of teams get to do against Carolina because we're so aggressive. I like what Polivka's doing here, working with his mask a little bit. He's buying his defenseman some time. Dominic Fate was out there for a long shift. And, of course, Fate, along with the rest of that unit, have to stay out there. The good news is some of the forwards have been able to change as McIntyre did not get trapped. Ball start off the faceoff. We'll reset and do it all over again as McIntosh battles against Panachik. Peter Panachik wins it back as Dominic Fate is hound dog by Eric Masters. Good work by Masters as he nearly forced a turnover. Krivalovic gives it right back to McIntosh. He turns it over to Dominic Fate, dumping it back in. The heady Czech defenseman looks for his fellow Czech man, Salak, overshoots him, and back the other way comes Sedenko. 
Thwarted there by Krivalovic, who finds John Salak. He's pinned up by Kieran Devine, who might have gotten away with a hold. Out to the far side, Krivalovic lets it go. Kenny slams it back in. Linesmen are warning that Carolina is offside, and they will have to touch up while Kieran Devine collects the puck for the Thunder. Back through the middle of the ice. Pass stretches too far for Eric Masters. Stan Vlasov beats him to it. Sends it to Kenny, who comes back around the near side boards toward Jan Salak. Pass through the middle, springs Panacic. He's two on two, trading places with Osaka. Panacic worked over by Pens as he's crunched up against the far side boards. A good clean hit. McIntosh loses possession of the puck to Jan Salak, who battles behind the net to Cristofaro, sends it around. Kenny holds the line for Carolina. Forging deeper ahead, Jan Salak shucks off a body check from DeCristofaro. Sedenko loses the puck in the far corner. Now Masters will corral it in the high slot. Moves it up off of a couple of skates as Connor Haas gets to it for Carolina. Haas will slow the pace, retreating while Delaware gets off on a line change. McIntyre back for Haas. Punches to the outside and will have to feed it down the dasher. McIntyre trades places, holding the puck. Goes off the boards up to the point. Holt sends it down low. McIntyre with a backhander that goes off of Charlie Penns, who had been knocked down in an altercation in front. Body starting to fly here early. Both teams answering the bell. This is Osaka circling from the left side. Drops a pass for Holt. Steps into a wrist shot. Sticked away by Aaron Taylor as McIntyre is giving a couple of shoves in front. He battles with Penns. They go into the left wing corner. Carolina wins it up to the point. Klinetsky walks and fires to George Holt, who sends a low wrist shot wide of the net. Osaka gets to the rebound, shovels it off the side of the goal. Delaware clears back out to center. Carolina with the opportunity to get a line change. Meanwhile, Eric Masters is the only one to get off for Delaware. Osaka toe drags and fires a bouncing shot behind the net. Cangelosi gets to it for the Thunderbirds. Moves it up the near side boards. Excuse me, feeds it down toward Danny Martin. He backhands a pass to the front. Off the crossbars, Cangelosi misses high. Dodging a bullet, the Delaware Thunder break it out. Ryan Marker comes into the right wing half wall, gaining the blue line, dumps it into Contrado. Contrado trading places into the middle, looking for Municello, who got tied up. This pass will go the length of the ice, a free clear for Carolina, and a good response for Delaware after Cangelosi hits the heavy metal. Back through the middle, reaching after it. Municello couldn't catch up to it. Kieran Devine can. He'll send it all the way into attacking ice. Picked up by Stan Bacor, who breaks it up to Daniel Martin. A backhand pass wide is gaining the zone as Everett Thompson sends a pass through the middle. It was affected and eventually blocked away by Dunford. Vlasov spins away from a body check. Stick handles back out to center. Carolina's offside. They've got a touch up. Ryan Marker, league leading scorer, crosses the blue line, works out wide as he was trying to feed Christers Bormanis. Picked up by Jay Kenny, who backhands it off the left wing boards. Panachet through the middle to Salak. He headmans to Krivalov, deking back towards center and out of the left side. Panacic feeds the point. Here's a chance. Vlasov caught and swallowed by Aaron Taylor, giving us a whistle with 7.53 to go in the first period. That'll take us to our first media timeout. Carolina and Delaware locked in a scoreless tie with 7.53 to go in the first. in Salem. Drew Blevins alongside you here. Still scoreless, 7.53 to go in the period as we take a look at the standings board. Dan as we Burry take a look at leading the standings the way in the East, Dan Carolina Burry leading the way in the East, Carolina leading the way in the West. But I tell you, those races for second place are starting to heat up. 
as Kenny blows up his man on the far side boards, and then Jan Salak gets in a rare big check. Carolina holds possession through the middle of the ice. This is Jan Krivalovic into the middle, scored! Jan Salak opens the scoring with 7.33 to go in the first, and Carolina is off and running. You know, I found that last statement you made to be a little funny. You said Hans Salak, a rare big check. He's always a big check. Oh, how punny you are, Kelly Curl. What a shot by Hans Salak. We talk about him wanting to get to the top of the circles there and shoot. I mean, that is prime scoring area for him. And we've seen it way more than once this season. You can't give him that kind of time and space. For Salak, it is his 15th goal of the season that puts him in sole possession of second place on the team in points. Salak is going to reach some rarefied air tomorrow if all goes well this evening. He is suiting up in his 99th game in the Thunderbirds organization. He will tie Josh Petrantonio for second all-time in games played tomorrow when he suits up against Delaware. Michael Bunn has the most games played considering he is out with the upper body concern. Jan Salak will gain a little bit of ground there. Face-off is won by Delaware as Kieran Devine spanks it right by the grill of the linesman. George Holt reaches after the puck and pokes it ahead toward Osaka. Gets a little bit of help just to roll it across the blue line. Back the other way, Eric Masters will go chasing after it. This will be icing against Delaware with 7.01 to go in the first period. 1-0 Carolina. You know, it's it's one of those things where it's interesting to watch Carolina play in neutral ice because they're very, very patient when you talk about moving the puck laterally. Connor Haas will take the draw here for Carolina. Another false start off the draw as Haas looking for an edge and he'll be thrown out of the faceoff circle. So Steve McIntyre will have to take the draw. Tell me that's not an intimidating presence to have to look at 6-8 on skates into the middle. Haas drops it back for Holt, who steps into a slap shot, blocked, deflects into the middle. McIntosh with a good play to kick it out. Up to the point, Klinetsky, a rising slapper, goes wide of the glove of Taylor, who looked to catch it. And now McIntyre is getting tied up with Kieran Devine. Up to the point, Klinetsky fires a bouncing shot through the legs, but trapped. Good stop by Aaron Taylor, as now Steve McIntyre and Kieran Devine continue their less than friendly conversation in front. That was an unbelievable stop by Aaron Taylor. He was on his way down to the ice. And when you look at a goaltender's leg pads, there's a couple of rolls that kind of hide from you on the inside of the legs. And I guarantee that hit a knee block or one of those inside pads to be able to squeeze that puck down to keep it out of the net. Carolina on the attack here in the last five minutes, up to the point looking for more. Bacor's shot bounces wide to the left side. After the puck is Contrato reaching after it. Cangelosi pokes it back. Sedenko to it for the Thunder. Sends a pass out wide. Municello having trouble getting to it. He does in the second effort. Looking up toward Ryan Marker, who is streaking behind everybody. Pass was chopped down by Stan Bacor. Out wide, Everett Thompson. A gritty Michigander feeds it ahead into the middle. Chance for Carolina, broken up by Sedenko. Back toward the front, a solid defensive stick, and Municello leads the rush in the other direction. He stick checked by Dominic Fate, who drops him. Carolina looking for the puck. It comes back to Dominic Fate after it bounced around and neutralized. To the far side, Bacor moves a pass up for Everett Thompson, who dumps it in. Charlie Penns gets his stick up high on Thompson as we're starting to see a little bit of gamesmanship seep into this contest. Out wide, Krivalovic lets it go for Peter Panacic. On his forehand, Panacic drives to Krivalovic, a wrist shot goes off of a body in front, as I believe it was Sedenko to get in front of it, up and out of play with 5.34 to go in this first period. one nothing Thunderbirds on the goal from Jan Salak. That was actually a very good shooting opportunity from Krivalovic there where he got that pass very quick in a shooting position and let it go. And that's one of the things that you can't underestimate with some of our shooters is catching the puck in a loaded position, ready to let it fly right away. Jan Krivalovic from Havarov, Czech Republic. It's interesting, Andre Nitsch actually played for that town's team, H.C. Havarov, in his playing career. Into the left corner, Evgeny Demin poking at it, gets it to DeCristofaro, who looks up for Kalinin. Poked down low, is turning with it as Panacic. Feeds the point, Kenny steps into a wrist shot, misses wide. Rebound comes to the left corner. 
around the boards. Carolina will have to regroup at center. This is Krivilovic. Stick handling around of Kalinin. Pressured by Evgeny Demon as it's moved ahead towards Salat. He sidesteps to Cristofaro, who is waiting for him as the puck drifts back for Christers Bormanis, who is seeing action all across the FPHL this year. At one point, a member of the Danbury Hat Tricks. Carried in by DeCristofaro. Stan Vlasov working on him. He goes back behind the net. Konetsky takes it away and starts the break out to the far side. Osaka, head mans for Connor Haas with speed around his man, driving from the left side, shoots wide. Holding the line is George Holt, but he slams it right into the stick of Daniel DeCristofaro. He looks up for Kalinin. Pass through the middle as he had Evgeny Demon coming with him. Misses him wide as Carolina retreats back into their own zone holding possession and the lead with 4.15 to go in this first period. 1-0 Thunderbirds. Viktor Grabenikov takes a slash as he dumps it in. He'll chase his own clear-in attempt. Taylor out of the net to play it. Taken by Cangelosi, who feeds low Grabenikov with a wrap chance. Puck in front, lifted back to the safety of center. Dominic Fate settles the bouncing puck and moves it back to the near wing. Coming in to break it up was Dunford. Ahead, Masters sends a pass that goes off of his own man in front. That was Driasi. As Delaware finally has an opportunity to attack in their offensive zone. Pens with a long shot. Scores! Charlie Pens with a seeing eye wrister as he beats Patrick Polivka on the high blocker side. And we're back to tied one to one. You know, I'm going to be honest, Drew, that was a bit of a fluky shot. There was a little bit of traffic in front of Polivka, and it almost looked like the puck knuckled on its way to the net. I don't think Polivka got great eyes on it, and I don't think the puck really flew in a true line. No, it looked like it was oscillating through the air, but Charlie Penns has the game-tying goal, and a big one late here in the first period. For Penns, it's only his second goal of the season and his ninth point. He's the captain of this team and the son of head coach Charlie Penn Sr., who's the general do-it-all of Delaware hockey. But what a goal for the Thunder, who had been a little bit sleepy over the past eight minutes, and now to tie this hockey game and look potentially to go into intermission at a 1-1 square even draw. Well, Drew, we've said it before. They don't ask how, they ask how many. And this is the perfect follow-up. This is the line that scores a lot of goals as Marker has his bid denied by Polivka. Dominic Fate. Shucks off a body check, just using sheer size to overwork Municello. A backhand pass through the middle, intercepted by Ryan Marker. He battles, but it's taken by Joe Cangelosi. Carolina has numbers across the attacking blue line. A drop pass, Thompson with a toe drag. Shot off the blocker of Taylor. It's high in the air. This could spring Delaware the other way. Marker coming through center, works left, fires a low shot, stopped by Polivka, and he's on top of the rebound with 2.46 to go in the first period. That's a line for Delaware that's going to do a lot of your scoring. And it's not really so much Thomas Municello as it is Brandon Contrato and Ryan Marker, but a great follow-up from a goal that comes from a guy who doesn't score a lot of them. You know, one of those things, it's so hard to explain because those types of goals you can't draw up. And it just kind of happens. And you see that throughout the season. Guys that do a good job of being positionally sound will get those opportunities. And I think you make a good point on that fluttering puck. For those of you who are baseball fans, we'll talk a little bit more about baseball later in the broadcast. But it's it's a knuckle curve almost. Into the middle, chance for Carolina. It goes wide of Salak. Two on one the other way comes Delaware. It's Kalinin holding. Deeks to the middle, a wrist shot. He scores! Anton Kalinin gives Delaware the lead. You know, I don't I don't love Polivka's depth there. I think when he goes back and he breaks his film down, he, he's going to wish he challenged a little bit more in that situation. It's very difficult, Drew, and you, you want to come out and challenge the shooter because that has to be your primary focus. You can't get beat on that first shot, and even if there's backdoor traffic, you're thinking to yourself, I have to get over there, I have to get over there, but you kind of just have to leave that to the defenseman, and uh, that's one of those that's a tough one to watch. Anton Kalinin gets his 12th goal of the season, which is good for his 23rd point. Neither of these teams growing in the assists department as Kalinin had a man going with him. It was Bormanis, but opted to take it himself, and that was a great move to cut back into the middle as he picks the five hole of Polivka. Now 2-1 Delaware in a very quick change of momentum. 
And if you want to know how the Delaware Thunder are able to beat teams that are above them in the standings, look no further than instances like that. This is a superb defensive team. And while there's still a lot of hockey to play, this takes on the very same air that it did when Delaware stomped Danbury 6-2 last Saturday. Well, in the last couple instances, we've seen them push Carolina. So when they've pushed Carolina, they forced them to get rid of pucks. That's how you get the opportunity to come back the other way. McIntyre with a slap shot crossing the blue line that's offside. 133 to go in the first period. 2-1 Delaware. They get both goals on back-to-back -back shots. What was the separation in time there, Drew, if you had to guess? As I'm looking at it, those goals are separated by one minute and 16 seconds. How many two-goal jumps have we seen this season under that two-minute window? I mean, it's, it's nearly immeasurable, and you talk about the last two minutes of the period. Both of those goals come right before that magic time mark. Delaware looking for more in the far corner, fed up to the point. Dunford with a long wrist shot caught by Polivka. He'll give no rebound on that bid with a minute 15 to go in this opening frame. Here's the other thing. While Carolina is still out shooting Delaware, this has been a Thunder team that's been able to keep up with the volume of shots. They're only being out shot 16 to 12. Right, and this well, a lot of that comes back to them pushing Carolina to dump pucks. They haven't given us the zone to score on the rush like other teams have as of late. Sidenko dumps it in. Dominic Fate takes it away. Works around to Brian Marker. Takes a slash from Municello as Marker comes back to get the puck. He'll stick handle up toward the point. Feeds it down low. Thomas Municello behind the net. Bobbing and weaving and backhands it up to the point. Here's Dunford. Walks to the top of the faceoff circle. His shot blocked by Everett Thompson. Thompson fighting for it. Gets around Dunford. He cuts free. Backhands one toward Daniel Martin. It goes off of his skate as now Thompson goes hard into the boards. Into the middle, Cangelosi with the wrister, scores! Cangelosi ties it with 39 seconds to go in the period. Oh, what a wrister! That is an almost perfect shot from Joe. He shot that low blocker. He shot it in stride with a little bit of a direction change. That's a perfect textbook shot from that location. The son of Plainsboro, New Jersey, ties the game late in the period. As the Carolina Thunderbirds draw back even, three goals scored in the last minute and 59 seconds. An unbelievable pace to this one. Salak takes it away, a low wrister, kicked out with a purpose by Aaron Taylor. Dumped down low by Carolina. Held on the near wing as Salak feeds it down low. Now we're going to get a whistle as that puck hops out of everybody's grasp. Now this is where if you're Delaware, you just have to be thinking to yourself, this puck has to go 200 feet. You actually want it to go 199 so you can negate the icing, but you got to get this puck out. Cangelosi with his sixth goal of the season. It is the 12th time this year Carolina has scored with less than a minute remaining in the period as the Thunderbirds continue to squeeze the clock for every ounce that it's worth. Evgeny Demon, one last rush for Delaware, five seconds on the clock, tries to feed it toward the slot, Panacek takes it away, that's where the horn will sound. Fireworks late in the first period as Carolina is able to tie it on the goal from Joe Cangelosi, 2-2 as these teams skate off to the locker room. You know, I said right before the game, when we talked about players, we thought we're going to do it well tonight. And I said, you know, I think Joe's the guy because I felt like Joe's playing with a little chip on his shoulder. I think he really wants to prove himself as of late. You know, he talked to me recently about how he just didn't feel like he was playing the best he could play. He's playing good hockey, but he knows he can be better. And he's a half an inch from a crossbar and out, and that perfect shot there, I think he's having a good night. Ladies and gentlemen watching, we invite you to stay tuned right here to this channel. We will not be going to our normal event screen. Instead, we have a very special homecoming surprise for a couple of individuals. We hope that you'll stay tuned and enjoy this, as it's always emotional when a soldier comes home. As it stands, at the end of the first period, the score, Carolina 2 and Delaware 2, will be right back after these messages. This is Thunderbirds Hockey.
We welcome you back to Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Drew Blevins alongside of Kelly Curl. Kelly, that's one of the coolest moments you'll get the opportunity to see as a soldier coming home and embracing his family. That's been a surprise that was sprung on the Thunderbirds organization yesterday. A great job by Caitlin Lusk and the rest of the game operations crew to make that happen. Oh, absolutely. And credit to him for making it all the way across the ice and the speed he did. It was actually very impressive. Meanwhile, you take a look at this hockey game. You want to talk about speed. I hope everybody fastened their seat belts and grabbed hold of their heads because ours were spinning three goals scored in a minute and 59 seconds. Most of the scoring coming after the 338 mark in the period. Delaware had a lead for a brief time after they tied the game. And then Joe Cangelosi picks the near side corner on Aaron Taylor to tie it for Carolina. Out of all those goals, which one stands as the biggest for you? I think the biggest one for me is Cangelosi being able to answer in the same period. So whenever you have to take momentum into the locker room, you feel like you've got a little bit more of an energy and a life when you come back. That deflated Delaware quite a bit going back into the room with less than a minute, two minutes left. I had mentioned it on the Labatt Coaches Show presented at the Carolina Ale House this past week. Delaware may very well be the most deceptive team in the Federal Prospects Hockey League. Yes, they're out of the playoff picture right now. Yes, they're ninth out of ten teams. They're the bottom of the East. But this is a team that's scrappy, that finds a way to dig out and get points in places they otherwise shouldn't. You get an opportunity to see exactly what I mean by that, even in this first period of six periods on the weekend. Well, we have to give them credit where credit's due. They've held Carolina to a limited amount of shots, which not a lot of teams can do. They've done a good job defensively protecting the house, which is that area between the crease and the face-off circles, you know, the actual physical dots that run up and down the ice. So with that being said, they've done a great job in their own zone. Good analysis from Kelly Curl. We'll step aside for this quick commercial break. Coming back on the other side, we'll give you a little bit more analysis on this first period of play. The score, Delaware 2, Carolina 2. We'll be right back after these messages.
We welcome you back to Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Drew Blevins alongside of Kelly Curl. Kelly, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of critical stats and figures. We'll start things off with our old Nick Williams shot counter. History has a way of repeating itself. That's what we're counting on. Old Nick Williams Farm and Distillery, America's most famous forgotten distillery. Carolina ends up out shooting Delaware 17 to 13 in that period. This is a very different tone than Carolina is used to seeing so far in this contest. Primarily, one of them being somebody is able to keep up with the raw volume of shots. Well, you know, the biggest thing with that is Carolina's done a much better job of pushing forward, right? And that's what's made us good all season long, is that we drive, we push forward, we get pucks deep. I saw you just got hip-checked there. Uh, meanwhile, you look at the goaltending for this game, both guys play a solid period not great not horrible either both guys come up with a couple of good saves as we look at the triad rv repair saves counter triad rv repair 939 welcome arcadia road in lexington when you need someone to save your travels give them a call mention thunderbirds 2019 for up to 10 percent off of your rv repairs for aaron taylor he makes 15 saves in the period for patrick polivka he makes 11. this is very ho-hum for both of these guys what do you expect to see out of them in the final 40 minutes of this game well i expect to see taylor get tired we know carolina is going to shoot pucks that's what we do so he's going to have to weather that storm it's going to come it's one of those things where when you're coming into our building the shots are coming then you just have to be ready for it for Polivka, it's going to depend on how we play tight in front of him. If we do a good job of collapsing to the top of the crease and helping with some rebounds, he's going to be just fine. But if we go the other direction on that, it's going to make it a little tougher. It's almost unfair to ask this question, but I'm going to ask you anyway. For Delaware, is it difficult to keep up this style of play and to keep continual pressure on the Carolina Thunderbirds? Because that's something that's just intriguing to me that they were able to execute the strategy you talked about so well in the first period even to keep Carolina 2-2 tied. So one of the things that's always going to be tough is when Carolina pushes at you. So when you're another team and you're coming into our barn we know how well conditioned Carolina is. They put the grind in all the time and the test won't really happen until about the 10 minute mark of the third period. That's when we see teams that are either going to be able to make it the full 60 or they're not and tomorrow night, it gets even tougher. We'll pause for this quick break. Coming back on the other side, we'll give you score updates from around the league. This is Thunderbirds Hockey.
Winston Salem. We take you for a quick twirl around the FPHL. We'll start things off with our marquee game of the night. Elmira is taking it to Danbury 5-2. Columbus leads Watertown 1-0. Men are up on Danville at home 2-1. And Port Huron leads Battle Creek 2-0. We are tied 2-2 here in Winston Salem. Second period puck drop is next. Welcome back to Winston-Salem. Drew Blevins alongside Kelly Curl as the Carolina Thunderbirds are tied with the Delaware Thunder 2-2 two to two as we start the second period. Delaware is going to be a very different looking team tomorrow when Taylor Cutting returns from his one game suspension. Other men that were involved in the altercation include Brennan Young and Patrick Tundall, both of whom will not be available this weekend as Aaron Taylor makes the save on the opening shot. Only seven seconds drift off the clock as he takes the slow ball. Face off will be to his blocker side with Haas, Osaka, and McIntyre as the forward line for Carolina. This is interesting for Steve McIntyre. He's seen a heavy dosage of playing time in the early going, Kelly. Well, Steve's one of those guys that he's so good positionally that he doesn't burn a ton of unnecessary energy. Holt dumps it in. Osaka chases it. Klinetsky's going to pinch. Gets around Contrato and feeds it down low. Daniel De Cristofaro after it for Delaware. Moves it up toward Municello. He backhands it off the near side boards. Intercepted by Osaka who comes down the right wing. Dips below the goal line. Spins around of Charlie Pins and gives it off for Klinetsky. He drives the middle with a deke off the side of the goal. Taylor shields off his man as the puck goes all the way around. Long shot for McIntyre, dribbles in on to Taylor, who will cover for a whistle with 19.15 to go in the second period, still 2-2. That's a good save by Aaron Taylor. One of the things he does very well is he seals the ice extremely well, and uh, we got to see that there on kind of that long fluttering shot in. He did a good job of staying poised, letting the puck hit him not reacting to the puck too early. Wrist shot through traffic, rebound, poke just wide. Cangelosi was looking for his second of the night. Kelly, you had mentioned Cangelosi is a guy who needed to prove himself this evening. What did you mean by that as Evgeny Demin gets to the puck? Well, I think Cangelosi is proving it to himself. It wasn't for anybody in particular or, you know, but I think he's just having one of those moments in his, his series throughout the season where he just wants to get going. He wants to feel good. And tonight's one of those games where he's absolutely done that. Nearly had a second of the night there. He controls here. Drops it off for Daniel Martin, who feeds it up to the point. Bacor with a long shot, misses wide on the glove side. Holding the line is Dominic Fate as he's battled with by Christers Bormanis. Taken away by Devin, who sends it up to center. Pass goes over top the stick of Bormanis. They'll jockey for position. Bormanis ahead of Bacor, beats out the ice and call. Picked up by Carolina, moved back up to the point as Kieran Devine sends a shot that was blocked immediately into the left wing corner. Bormanis after it. It's taken by Stan Bacor for Carolina. He feeds it back for Dominic Fate. A backhand pass out to the left wing and a cross ice look toward Cangelosi. Intercepted as Pens fires it back into attacking ice. Below the goal line, Dominic Fate gets to it on the far wing, feeds it back to the near side. Bacor. Steps into the lane, just moves it up toward Cangelosi. He's a round of McIntosh and feeds Krivalovic. Krivalovic driving on his forehand. Quick shot off of Taylor. Big rebound. Salak going after it. Beats Eric Masters to the puck and feeds the point. Glass off. Fires a high wrister. Caught by Taylor. He's going to opt to play it out. A risky move, but Delaware able to get it back out to center. 
That was a la Martin Brodeur with Aaron Taylor catching and moving it back down. Here's a shot by Panachik. He misses three glass panes wide as he spun it back toward the front. Salak sends it low for Panachik behind the net. Worked on by DeCristofaro up to the point. Vlasov fakes the slapper now. Falls for a wrist shot, a bouncing puck in front. Everybody's sweeping at it. Delaware gets it out. Kenny pokes it back toward the front of the net. Is battling up toward the line. Delaware unable to get it out. Carolina drives it back toward the front. Panacha couldn't catch the pass as he's hound dog from behind by Driasi. Another of the new acquisitions for Delaware. You can tell this is a Thunder team that has largely had a revolving door trying to build everything. This could be a two-on-one for Delaware. Into the middle, Driasi driving. Good defensive play by Jay Kenny as Carolina gets to it. Turned over immediately. Eric Masters loses to Joe Osaka. Out wide, Vlasov. Feeds it ahead for Panachik. It hops over his stick. This is going to be icing as Devine is behind everybody. Face off back into Carolina attacking ice. That was a, a good opportunity, if you will, for the Thunder there. But that line had been on the ice for 30, 45 seconds already of just end zone coverage, not to mention what they had on the first part of that shift. They were just too tired to make that rush. Well, and what Delaware is excelling at doing is creating opportunities where they have numbers in areas. Even when you look back on the two-on-one goal they scored, they had that numerical advantage going all the way down until Kalinin actually shot the puck. That's something a lot of teams don't do against Carolina. No, it's because they get trapped so low in the defensive zone that they can't break out together. Kenny getting to the puck, moves it around of Municello, up toward Connor Haas, who finds Osaka, goes off the heel of his stick and comes back to the near side boards. Nikita Sedenko able to get around the blue line, dumps it in as Dan Vlasov gets to the puck for Carolina. Sends it all the way around the boards, too wide for Connor Haas. Devine holds the line for Delaware, moves it into the middle. Here's a chance for Municello off of his stick. Carolina survives, but able, unable to get it out. Municello works on Jay Kenny, who backhands at the length of the ice. Sedenko getting back to it. Icing was waved by Chris Kwong, and I'm not sure what he saw there to wave that call. Nonetheless, we play on as Municello backhands it deep. Chased by Contrato and Marker. Carolina to it first. McIntyre using the long reach, but he's stick-checked by Municello, who will get off on a line change. Ryan Marker from the left wing tests Polivka on the short side. He catches and holds. That was a good shot by Marker there. I don't think he expected, I don't think Polivka expected him to shoot from such a bad angle. I think Polivka was kind of glancing to his left to see what that backside guy was doing because you always have to be aware. They, they say that the most space is created from the place the puck just left because that's where opportunity arises. So Polivka was looking over his shoulder just to make sure that guy who made that pass wasn't on his way to the back door. Well, if there's one thing you can say about Ryan Marker, he's dangerous from anywhere in front of the goal line. He's got a wicked wrist shot, and really all you have to do is look at the goal scoring tally to understand just how skilled this young man is. You score 28 goals in less than half a season, you're going places. Dunford out wide to Colleen in the most recent goal scorer for Delaware. His pass goes off the dasher and comes deep into attacking ice. This is icing. And Charlie Penns is furious. And I believe the referees are going to put the face off right at the center ice dot and admit that the mistake was made. And he absolutely should be upset. And it is not. It's coming all the way back down into the zone. That is absolutely the wrong call. And Brian Scully had set up at center. That is 100% the wrong call there. Carolina, the beneficiary of the attacking zone draw. Joe Cangelosi will take it. Both men sweeping. Whistle is blown as Demon was nearly thrown from the faceoff circle. Delaware gets to it. Dunford unable to break it out. Cangelosi down low for Martin. Into the middle. One-timer never got to Everett Thompson as Dunford comes back to get the puck. Snaps it ahead. Through the middle. Polivka out of his net. Bacour will come get it for Carolina. Moves it ahead for Cangelosi. Two on two the other way. Cangelosi feeds it ahead for Thompson. Great stop by Taylor. And he covers the rebound. Good push by Aaron Taylor to get back to that near side goal post and rob Everett Thompson. So two things happened very well there. Joe Cangelosi hit the brakes as he entered the zone and created space. The defenseman kept backing up. Everett Thompson Unbelievable play to just get to the net to be able to get a stick on that. 
14.45 left in the Modern Automotive second period. Modern Automotive offers the most comprehensive selection of vehicles in the Winston-Salem and Triad area, including 10 makes across multiple dealerships. Experience the modern difference with Modern Automotive. McIntyre finishes his man off the draw. Connor Haas with a hit onto Eric Masters. Meanwhile, it's McIntosh to tote the puck into the zone. Holt on his backhand, moves it too far for Klinetsky. Delaware has numbers in attacking ice. Masters on his forehand, stick handles around of Klinetsky, who comes back to make a play on the puck. Good work here by Eric Masters as he continues to battle in that far corner. Carolina whacks at the puck and is able to get it to Connor Haas, who stick handles back behind of his own net. Haas will give to Daniel Klinetsky, the rookie defenseman from the Czech Republic, who has been one of the more prolific scorers for Carolina. A backhand dump in, flutters behind the net. Osaka gets to it, feeds for Connor Haas. Dumps it back toward Janselak. Intercepted by McIntosh, who backhands it up the near side boards. Delaware loses possession to Jan Salak. Fed back down low toward Osaka, who takes on his backhand. Curls to his forehand side. Drives behind the net. Up to the point, Kenny with a one-timer just wide. Rebound loose. Panacha can't get it to go as his stick collided with that of Charlie Penns. Krivalovic. Down low for Panacic. He comes out of the left wing faceoff circle to the point. Kenny with a slapper off the glove side shoulder of Aaron Taylor. A good stop, and Delaware survives back out to center. Rolled into the zone on an awkward play made by Dreasi. Carried back the other way by Peter Panacic. He's the furthest man ahead. Drops it for Krivalovic. Rolls a shot into Taylor. He'll corral the rebound, sensing danger, and covers. That's a couple of good stops by Aaron Taylor out on the top of his goal crease. He's under assault here. You yourself were under assault last weekend as a member of the Port Huron Prowlers. How did it feel to be back in net? You know, it was fun to be back in net. The circumstances were tough. Long drive down, having to play that night made things a little difficult. It was hard to get the body right. I just, it was hard to feel comfortable after being in the car for seven and a half to eight hours. Now, the more interesting thing was you were functioning as the fourth string goaltender for the Port Huron Prowlers. Your backup was their play-by-play -play broadcaster, Jeremy Skiba, who did the whole game from the bench. Without a chest pad on. That was one of the most unique things I've ever seen in my eight years covering hockey. Behind the net, this is Everett Thompson, who's stopped by a good hit from Dunford. Into the middle, Cangelosi punches it just wide on the blocker's side, looking for a short side goal. Fade up at the point. Feeds it down the dasher for Cangelosi, who takes on his forehand. Battling Daniel DeCristofaro. Here's a shot just wide again. Cangelosi doing yeoman's work in front. Feeds it for Everett Thompson. On his backhand, shouldered away by Dunford, who hauls him down. Martin comes to get the puck to the point. Dominic Fate sends it down low again as Dunford's gotten tied up with Everett Thompson, standing over him in the slot. Dunford's lost a stick. Here's Fate with a shot through traffic, misses wide. We've got a penalty coming up. And now we're going to get a holding call, and I believe this is going to go against Brian Dunford of Delaware, Carolina to the fast mid power play. It is, so quite a deceiving play by there, Everett Thompson in front. He got tied up with Dunford, and he was kind of able to work his stick out of his hands. I think Dunford was afraid of taking the penalty there first, and then when he realized there was a shooting chance up front, he just wanted to get his hands on Everett Thompson so he couldn't get a clean tip. Carolina to the fast mid power play. Appointments available seven days a week, including evenings and holidays, or no appointment necessary at all. Get on the faster track to quality urgent care with fast med. Carolina's power play so far on the season operating at 20.2%. It's good for only seventh in the FPHL, but this is a Carolina team that has the top penalty kill at 89.7%. Steve McIntyre to take the draw, loses it, but Delaware gives it back. Here's Klonetsky's shot. Good stop by Taylor, a big rebound. Corralled by Kalinin. He's pressured, and Delaware can't get it out. Klonetsky holds the line near side to Connor Haas. Steps into a pass to Osaka, who feeds Klonetsky back up at the top. Back for Osaka to Klonetsky. Wines fires a wrist shot, swallowed by Taylor, as Steve McIntyre was right there in front, providing all the traffic anybody could ever want. You know, this is going to be tough for Aaron Taylor here. He's playing a little bit reserved for a power play, which typically speaking, you want to be glove or stick length away from the post. But as soon as the puck breaks above the tops of the circles, you want to get out just a little bit more to make yourself seem bigger. Good start to this sequence as Delaware is able to send it the length of the ice. Carolina has to regroup. George Holt crossing the defensive blue line feeds Joe Osaka, who comes down the right wing. Looking for somebody to pass to. Goes off the inboard to Connor Haas on the left wing side. Daniel Klinetsky 
quarterbacks the power play, sends a wrist shot, tipped by Osaka well wide into the near corner. Steve McIntyre feeds a pass to the point, intercepted by Kalinin. He springs Demon. Kalinin and Demon driving. Here's a chance for Kalinin, drives into the backhand. Good stop by Polivka. Kalinin holds his own rebound, fires a shot back toward the front of the net. There's a whole chorus of Thunderbirds there to take it away. Connor Haas backhands a pass to Klinetsky, a diving play made by Anton Kalinin. He feeds Demon, long slap shot caught by Polivka. He's going to have to play it out, shoveling to Connor Haas with 45 seconds remaining on the power play, 10.55 remaining in the second period. Dumped in by Osaka. Holding the puck here, Taylor, it never came to him as Charlie Penns rides his man, Grivalovic, hard into the boards to Jay Kenny. Out to the far side, Panacek trading places with Jan Salak, who holds on the left wing. To the top, Panacek has room to walk. Winds and fires a wrister. Wyatt on the blocker side, rebound toward the front of the net. Delaware clears over the jumping Panacek, and they'll survive all the way down into attacking ice. Coming back to get to it is Vlasov. Feeds Kenny, who's able to, to tip it into the zone. No. Jay Kenny says, I touched it, I touched it. And all of those pleased will fall on deaf ears. No. And the officials are going to say, yep, in fact, he did. Now, here's a question for you, Drew. Just then, we saw Peter Panacek jump, make a play on the puck with his free hand. Stan Vlasov picks it up at the far blue line. Is that still not a hand pass initiated in the offensive zone? Did he actually make contact with he did. the puck? He did. In my opinion, that would be a yes. But we've seen stranger things, and some would argue have more impact on the game. Right out of the box, Dunford gets into Salak, who survives the check. Works out wide toward Panacek. Here's Sedenko stepping in. Takes a huge body check. Carolina holds the line. Rolled on net. Good stop by Taylor as he puts it back behind the goal crease. Held by Kenny. Feeds it on his forehand down toward Panacek. A low wrist shot blocked on the way through off of Jan Salak. He goes digging after it. Sedenko backhands it up the boards. Held by Jay Kenny, who feeds it below the goal line. Daniel to Cristofaro has to chase for Delaware. Moves it to the near side, Contrato to Ryan Marker. He's got space to work. Takes a shot from behind, survives it into the middle. Contrato with a shot toward the net, blocked. We've got a delayed penalty. It'll go against Carolina. De Cristofaro feeds it low for Contrato, tipped on goal. Kenny will get to the puck for Carolina, and the Thunderbirds are back on the Wake Forest Baptist Health penalty kill. This is slashing against Carolina. You know, that was good recognition by Taylor. He saw that almost immediately and took off to the bench to try and give his team that opportunity for six on five. And, and that's the critical place to do it right there. When your team's starting to break it out, you can add that extra man into the rush. I've actually seen several times where as the goaltender makes it to the bench, the forward jumping comes out of the far end of the bench, and he gets about a 25, 30-foot jump into the play, and it makes him very dangerous if the defenseman doesn't see him. Carolina's penalty kill is one for one on the evening came back on a Steve McIntyre penalty very early in the first. Contrato holds the line for Delaware. Down for Ryan Marker. Dangerous from the left wing. Holds in the corner. Spins it off the inboard. All the way out for Kalinin on the opposite wing. He'll return fire toward Marker who feeds it up to the point for Brandon Contrato who has 22 assists on the season. That would be good for just about any team lead except for the fact number 16 is playing for Delaware. He has 24 as Carolina clears the length of the ice. Contrato will get it back as it's shot around by Charlie Penns, who does have a goal in this contest on that knuckle curveball from the point. Penns crosses the blue line with a slap shot. This one goes sky high and out of play. This is normally a place where you'd have immediate timeout, but since it's a penalty killing situation, we'll play on with 8.40 to go in this period. 2-2 between Carolina and Delaware, a minute 14 left on the Panacek penalty. And we talk about the shooting difference here that we didn't see in the first. Carolina now out shooting 27 to 15. Carolina wins the draw back. Daniel Klonetsky fighting for it. It's one out of the corner by Delaware. To the point, Contrato back on the wing for Marker, who sends it down low. In front, one-timer. Demon never got a good stick to it as Osaka came flying into this slot. Up to the point. Long shot through traffic, functions as a pass down below the goal line. Thunder keeping possession here. Evgeny Demon, stick handling, throws it low. George Holt battles with Kalinin, a bouncing puck behind the net. Marker feeds Kalinin on his forehand, a route of Daniel Klinetsky, tries to move it ahead. A good hit by Connor Haas on Demon. Into the middle, Contrato, good stop, Polivka. 
Contrado cutting, had space with a rolling puck. To the point, to Cristofaro, fakes the slapper. Up top marker, holding, cross ice pass, blocked on the way through, taken by Kalinin as it got through after it had been stopped initially. To Cristofaro, long shot, tipped on the way through, just wide. Picked up by Marker, who feeds it low for Evgeny Demon. Ten seconds remaining in the Delaware power play. Intercepted by Klinetsky. Looks wide, finds Connor Haas, stays on side. Haas to Klinetsky, looking for the one-timer. He was pressured from behind by Marker. Into the middle, Haas couldn't get the one-timer to go. Back to five aside, hockey we go. Contrado rides Connor Haas hard into the near side corner. They battle two by two there. Picked out of the pile by Daniel to Cristofaro. He leads it all the way ahead. This is going to go just wide of Polivka, and it'll be icing against Delaware with 7-11 to go in the period. You know, you've got to take a look there. Marker's been on the ice for quite a while, and uh, he was out there for, I think, almost that entire two minutes. This is one of those opportunities where if Carolina's smart, they can really exploit his side of the ice. You're hearing the cheer, and you might see a couple of hands get in the way of your vision. It is mascot mania night as Salak cracks his man, and this is going to be a penalty as Evgeny Demon took a shot up toward the head area. This will be Salak for interference as Carolina goes back to the kill. A tough penalty for the Thunderbirds to swallow with 7.04 to go in this second period. And let's talk about, I think we're actually going to see Marker come off the ice here for the first time in about three minutes. What I was about to tell you is it's Mascot Mania Night, so some of your favorite furry friends from Brenner Children's Hospital, the Winston-Salem Dashes Bolt, the Texas Roadhouse Armadillo are all on the concourse area. The Wake Forest Demon Deacon has also been spotted as well as a small green creature out on the far side that I'm not sure I can pick out. Delaware will start from the other end. Do you have a favorite mascot when you were coming up in the youthful ranks, Kelly? You know, I was always a big fan of Wild Wing from the Mighty Ducks. Always a good one, although many people remember he, he set himself on fire in an early season stunt. I uh, actually watched him drop down out of the ceiling on a zip line. Always fun when Wild Wing's involved. Another one of those mascots in the Noble Bird family, along with Winston and Salem, who are celebrating their birthdays today. Back to hockey now. This is Municello on his forehand, feeds it down low. To the point it goes. Bormanis with a low shot blocked. Rebound, Polivka swallows it as Eric Masters was lurking in front. Just south of a minute to go in the penalty, 6.02 to go in the second period. We remain 2-2. Interesting pacing of the second period. Without the media timeout, it seems like we really have gone on a fair amount of time but it seems like Delaware is hanging with the pace here, only being outshot 27-17. They are. These back-to-back two-minute penalties are definitely helping their situation. The marker line is back out. This is the top power play unit. Carolina wins the faceoff. They'll send it back out to center where Contrado will field. Behind the net, Charlie Penns, Jr. Stick handling and looking up ice. Pens gains the red line and flips it into the zone. Off the inboards, Carolina to it first. Comes right back up the near side boards. Pens holds the line. Gets a little bit of help, but that might have done more harm as Kalinin pokes the puck back out to center. Breakout pass intercepted by Everett Thompson. He'll retreat into defensive ice before turning and firing a wrist shot 200 feet down to Aaron Taylor's end. Taylor comes back to the near side for Charlie Pens. Just 15 seconds remaining on the power play for Delaware. Skatered into the zone by Ryan Marker. Dumps it in with his forehand, surviving the body check. Big body Dominic Fate receives it. He'll move it up as Delaware reaching after it, taken by Marker. Behind the net, Ryan Marker to Anton Kalinin now. The top of the left wing faceoff circle, dumps it back down low, bounces off of a couple of bodies in front. Fate's the last man to it for the Thunderbirds, and he'll retreat back behind to Patrick Polivka. Carolina will start the breakout. A head man look stretches too far for Steve McIntyre, and this will be icing once again, 4.42 to go in this second period. And again, we are stuck in a position where you cannot take a media timeout. Now, this is something where you only have a single media timeout in a period. 
it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility not to have one. I can recall that the Carolina, Thun uh, Carolina Hurricanes, the NHL level, went an entire third period with no commercial breaks because there was no time to give them that. And when you take three breaks in an NHL period, it's one of the most unique things you'll ever see in a television station's nightmare. Masters and Haas battle hard against the far boards. Up at the point, Dunford. A low wrister off the end boards. I think he was trying to sh send a pass there off the backboards. Carolina sniffs it out as they'll battle right up against the left wing half wall. McIntosh pokes it free. Eric Masters reaching after it, turned over. McIntosh with a shot, caught and held on to by Polivka. That will take us to our media timeout this period. 4.15 to go in the second period. Carolina 2, Delaware 2. We'll continue with more hockey action after this. Welcome back to Winston-Salem. Drew Blevins alongside of Kelly Curl. February 14th, 15th, and 16th, the Atlantic Coast Collegiate Hockey League is proud to bring its season-ending championship tournament back to the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex. Come catch some of the best Southern College hockey has to offer at the ACCHL tournament. Looks like NC State's going to come back as the number one seed after their run to nationals last year. Wake Forest should be the number two seed. And the University of North Carolina jockeying for position, trying to sneak in here with only three games left in the league season. The ACCHL tournament, for the fans that are close by and get a chance to go, it's an unbelievable weekend. You get to see a lot of college hockey. And it also promotes a game where guys from this area have that opportunity that they just didn't when we were growing up, Drew. Carolina able to move it up. This is Jan Salak who dumps it in. A round of Aaron Taylor who's going to let it go. Dunford up the near dasher looking for Municello. It bounces back toward Kieran Devine. Sidesteps a body check. Krivalovic reaching after the puck. Kenny pokes it free. To Salak driving the net. Intercepted by a marker who frines Brandon Contrato and he'll work back toward Taylor's end. Backhanded up the board toward Municello. Kenny jumps the route. Lost the puck on the way back though. Contrato dumps it in for Delaware. Back behind the net to receive it is Jan Krivalovic. Works wide. Kieran Devine trying to hold the line. The clear out attempt goes over his head. Marker retreats to center to get it. This is Devine. Sends it up and ahead toward Municello. This will be dumped in. Polivka waiting for it. Vlasov will take it instead for Jay Kenny. All the way up and ahead where Nikita Sedenko pushes it back for Devine. Through the middle, Municello starts his engine. Goes off of Contrato's skate. Intercepted and going the other way. Dumped in by Jan Krivalovic. He'll be stopped on a dime by Aaron Taylor, where Devine goes back to retrieve. Three minutes remaining in the second period. No goal scored here. Still 2-2 between Delaware and Carolina. Marker around his man. Shovels a forehand shot toward the net. Wide of Polivka. Picked up on the far side by Municello. Tommy Municello turns it over to Dominic Fate, who's waiting for it in the defensive slot. Moves it ahead. Thompson. Has it roll off of his backhand into the zone to Cristofaro. Gives it back to Everett Thompson. Sidenko pressuring Thompson back behind the net. Forces him into turning the puck over. Picked up by Brandon Contrato who backhands a pass ahead for Ryan Marker. Coming down the right wing. He's upended on a good hit by Stan Bacor. Dominic Fate rides his man hard into the boards. Spun up to the point. Sidenko winds and fires a wrister off the far goal post. Rebound loose and Daniel Martin gets to it. That was a splendid shot by Nikita Sidenko. Carolina back the other way. Thompson driving the net. Shovels one on to Taylor. Rebound in the goal crease. Picked up by Delaware. They'll survive back out to center. This is high in the air. A bouncing puck comes back down toward George Holtzend. Dominic Fate 
Picks up the puck for Carolina, south of two minutes remaining in the period now. Up towards Steve McIntyre. Former NHLer dumps it in. McIntyre on his backhand. Sends it across for Connor Haas. Into the middle, one-timer wide of Taylor. George Holt to the puck for Carolina. Sends it low for Osaka. Feeds McIntyre below the goal line on the give and go. Pass was deflected on the way back. George Holt will dump it in. Aaron Taylor out of his net once again. Charlie Penn's miscommunication on the skirting of the net. The puck is held up. Demon chops it off and springs a chance the other way. Kalinin lifts it into the middle toward Driasi. It goes over his stick and is picked up by Carolina. Through the middle, Jan Salak. Dipsy doodles around his man, dumps it in. Peter Panachik on his backhand, collects as he's pressured by Dunford. Dunford absolutely railroaded by Jan Salak. Up to the point, Vlasov winds and fires, kicked out with a purpose by Taylor. Rebound, bouncing, taken away. Kalinin's held up. This will be a penalty against Carolina as the Thunderbirds touch. Carolina back to the kill. That's a tough penalty there by Stan Vlasov, especially with that little time left in the period. My Protein is the official protein provider of the Carolina Thunderbirds. Click their My Protein logo on carolinathunderbirds.com for a special 42% discount on select My Protein products. My Protein. Carolina back to the Wake Forest Baptist Health penalty kill. 50 seconds to go in the period. Vlasov called for the penalty. And once again, a chance for Delaware here at the end of this period to strike. Evgeny Demon will take the draw against Peter Panachik. Demon wins it back for Marker, who feeds Contrado. Sends a low pass that's blocked by Daniel Klonetsky on the way through, and eventually Carolina takes it. Two on two the other way. Panachik with Krivalovic driving. Weaves Panachik looking for a wrister stolen from behind by Evgeny Demon. It's a three on two. Delaware brings it ahead of the line. Kalinin has it roll off of his forehand. Polivka shovels it right into the side glass. Up toward the point, Krivalov digging after it. It's moved up ice by Klinetsky. His pass intercepted, he's gonna get it back. Short-handed chance, Klinetsky with a wrister, off the goal post! What a chance for Carolina, short-handed in the final minute in the second period. Everett Thompson at center, sends it off the dasher. Charlie Pins will receive both goaltenders can give a tap to the red goalposts in this final two minutes of play in the second. That's where the horn sounds. A lot of action, but no goals. 2-2 through 40 minutes. You know, that was a very scary last minute and a half from both teams. Delaware hits a post. Carolina comes down and hits a post. Neither one of those goals are ideal with that little time left in the period. An outstanding hockey game we have going here between a team fighting to get back into the playoff picture and a team fighting for home ice advantage through the playoffs in its entirety. Carolina 2 and Delaware 2 as we step aside for this quick commercial break. Coming back on the other side, we're proud to give you a sneak preview of the brand new black uniforms the Carolina Thunderbirds are wearing. This is Thunderbirds Hockey.
Welcome back to Winston-Salem. Drew Blevins alongside of Kelly Curl. I've ditched the jacket to give all of you viewers at home an opportunity to view the new black uniform. This is actually a game edition. It does have the fight strap on the back that we'll show you in a second. But we start things off with a very traditional Thunderbirds crest. There is no diagonal sash this year for Carolina. That was something general manager Jimmy Milliken wanted to do as best he could, was to make sure that we had the Big Bird crest on the front of the black uniforms, very similar to last year. You know, when you do the sash kind of on the road, it makes sense. The, the visiting team gets to see it's Carolina nice and big. The home fans aren't going to look at that all the time. But there's just something about this logo that's top notch. And I'm going to get my uh, graphicist here to lose the lower third so perhaps you can see things a little bit better. If, if I could get one of you to take those lower thirds away for us. Because the other thing we'll show you, there is a new sponsor logo right here. That is Recursive AV. Haven't really got the chance to talk about them a lot, but Recursive is going to be the one responsible for some sound, audio, and visual upgrades that come to the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex. They signed a long-term contract with the Carolina Thunderbirds City of Winston-Salem to upgrade the venue and now get the opportunity to have their logo showcased right here on this Sharp uniform. Well, these jerseys are great top to bottom. I love the way that they did the stripes. I'm obviously a big fan of the tie. And, Drew, would you like to show the uh, the back of the jersey off a little? Well, sure, because you'll, you'll get the opportunity to see. Um, this is one that I had custom made, and I'll get the chance to tell that story in a second. But you really get to see the sharp stitching design, white numbers and everything kind of pop a little bit. What did you want to show off here? So, for the fans, you're going to get to see this on the inside of the jersey. This is actually called your fight strap. Now, the fight strap is designed so that when guys get into a tilt and they're going to do something, the jersey can't come over the head. And that's one of the things that is a mandatory rule at all levels of professional hockey. If that jersey makes it all the way off, that's an immediate ejection. Well, and that's interesting because that's really one of the telltale signs of whether or not you're wearing an authentic game-worn hockey jersey or not. Does it have the fight strap? You're right. That's one of the most critical things. A couple of new features, and this is what distinguishes it from last year's black jersey. You can see here the striping on the sleeve is a little bit different. There had initially been a small black stripe that separated the red and the white. This year that's gone away. This is a very clean-looking uniform, very sharp. The white and the red go really nicely on this one, but kind of the the um, coup de gras, if you will, is this new logo right here, and I'll, I'll see if I can fan it out for you. This is the new alternate logo that the Carolina Thunderbirds are going to be using. It's the bird in the state of North Carolina. This is something that the team has sat on for a very long time. A sharp look, certainly something that can now be bought in the souvenir store. You'll see it on hats, you'll see it on hoodies, which were released tonight, and a couple of stickers as well. I think it's really important for this team to understand that it's not only branding hockey for Winston-Salem for the triad area, but when you're in a southern state, normally not considered a hockey market, you're really branding the sport for an entire group of individuals in the state of North Carolina. Absolutely, and that's something to be proud of, especially in a building like this one where we've had well over the traditional fan mark come in and out the doors. And when you have the ability to do that, you have the ability to reach out to small communities, especially the ones surrounding just the Winston-Salem area, it makes everyone feel like they're a part of the organization. Well, and there deserves to be a huge tip of the cap to the creative team for everybody who had a part in making these jerseys come together. They've been an outstanding look for a new uniform this year, and Carolina's looking forward to wearing them the rest of the season. Well, I think the fans are as well. I mean, everyone loves the black uniforms, especially the guys like Jay Kenny and Steve McIntyre. Makes them feel a little slimmer on the ice when they're <laughs> out there. So they, they need all the help they can get. Back in black are the Carolina Thunderbirds. Meanwhile, we'll go back to hockey analysis after this short break. This is Thunderbirds Hockey.
Kelly, that's an exciting second period, but ultimately no goals are scored in it. What did you make of the pace of play there? Well, it was very lopsided. Like I call that a, a teeter-totter period where the beginning of it, the brunt work started out, you know, kind of in Delaware's end where Carolina kept a, a bit of pressure. And then we had back-to-back -back two minute penalties. And that just really hurts that driving force that you have. You know, we saw a little flurry of chances there at the end. Um, you know, those are great A scoring chances if I've ever seen them. Well, and as you look at the old Nick Williams shot counter, Carolina's out shooting Delaware 30 to 19. This is more in the realm of where Carolina expects to be. But there are two things that stand out to me. Number one, Delaware has done a very nice job of limiting the raw number of shots for Carolina. They've kept them to the outside for the most part. And the other thing is they've survived a couple of critical chances. Carolina hits a goal post. Aaron Taylor comes up with a couple of big saves on Jay Kenny's one-timer bids. They've done a lot of little things right, and they find themselves right in the thick of things in this hockey game with the best team in the league. Well, those are some of the things that we knew Delaware had to do well. We knew that they were going to have to force Carolina to dump pucks. We also knew that Carolina was not going to get the same rush opportunities. And that's where we get so many of our shots are on the rush because we're breaking into the zone with speed. So when you push Carolina up in neutral ice, the red line, the blue line, it forces us to have to get rid of it, limiting a lot of those rush shots. Now, we do know some of the rush shots aren't always the best quality, but when you load quantity up, goalies start to fatigue, then some of those rebounds get bigger, and your opportunities come late in the third. Let's go ahead and look at a couple of keys here in this third and final period of regulation. Quickly give me one key for both teams to be able to skate away with three points in this game. Secondary opportunities for Carolina. They have to try and do a better job of just getting to the net for the second rebound. And then for Delaware, it's going to be pucks on net. And what I mean by that is they have to create shots that Polivka struggles to see. The Delaware Thunder in search of their ninth victory on the season. Carolina looking for a win number 22. You can throw the stats out the window as we head into the final 20 minutes of regulation play. We'll step aside for this quick commercial break. Coming back on the other side, we'll have our out-of-town scoreboard. This is Thunderbirds Hockey.
Welcome back to Winston-Salem. Drew Blevins alongside Kelly Curl. Carolina finds themselves in a difficult position, Kelly. This is a team undefeated when they have the lead after 40 minutes in play, but they only have three total victories if they are not leading after 40. This is going to be a wild ride to the finish between Delaware and Carolina. Yeah, I'm excited to see how Delaware holds up. I mean, we talk about Carolina's endurance all the time, and it's it's just a staple note of their game. It's one of the reasons why they win games late in the third. And it'll be interesting to see if Delaware can hold their ground. Carolina will be attacking from right to left across your radio dial. Delaware has a minute and 10 seconds remaining on their power play. They are 0 for 3 on the man advantage tonight. Carolina once again getting stuck in some penalty trouble. For the third time in as many games, they've taken three penalties in a single period. Through the middle, out wide for Marker, a bouncing puck taken by Ryan Marker as he moves it to the inside toward Kalinin. Up to the top, Charlie Pins feeds it down the dasher, pass intercepted by Kladetsky. He finds Joe Osaka coming back the other way. Osaka lifts it into the zone, in front, poke just wide! Aaron Taylor upends Osaka as he nearly fumbled that puck into his own net. Anton Kalinin crossing the blue line, dumps it in. Cangelosi goes to get it. He sends this one sky high. A bouncing puck eludes Charlie Pens. Comes back on a desperation reach play. Pens checks himself into the boards. Into the middle. Cangelosi battles with Evgeny Demon. Wins it and feeds it low. Loose stick back behind the net as Brennan Contrado gets to it and settles the pace with only 10 seconds to go in the power play. To Ryan Marker, out wide for Kalinin, skate to stick. He's upended by Bacor, who backhands it along. Contrado, long wrist shot, punched out by Polivka. Carolina clears as we go back to even hockey. Contrado, retreating to gain possession, spanks it off the near side boards. Bouncing pocket center, corralled by Bacor. Gains the red line and dumps it in, chasing after it, Panacic. Squares, but can't get to the puck. There was no defenseman there. Backhanded through the middle. McIntosh, long shot. Another penalty coming here against Carolina as Polivka catches. This will be slashing, and it's going to go against Jay Kenny. You know, Jay Kenny's a little upset about that. I think that was some of that fireman axe duty there because that hand came from way back. Kenny shaking his head, vehemently disagreeing. But he'll take a seat, and Carolina is shorthanded for the fifth time in this contest. This is very quickly becoming a storyline, Kelly Curl. Chance after chance for the Thunder on the power play yet to convert. You know, if they don't convert here soon, that will be the difference maker in this game. 18-26 to go in the third period. Jay Kenny to the box, two minutes for slashing. Carolina back on the Wake Forest Baptist Health penalty kill. De Cristofaro sends it down the near side boards. Stan Bacor jumps the route, battling with Ryan Marker, who eventually takes it away from him. Feeds it up to the point for Christers Bormanis. Right back down low, Marker pressured by Bacor. Bormanis finishes deep below the goal line. Anton Kalinin in the right wing corner, loses possession to the puck. Carolina gladly obliges taking it, and Krivalovic finishes all the way down the ice. Back behind the net, Aaron Taylor will set it up on a tee. Forward to Cristofaro, who forehands it to the left wing side. Bormanis sidesteps a body check. George Holt was the one who laid it. Dumped back in on a finishing play by Evgeny Demon. Picked up by Kalinin. Feeds the point. Bormanis with a wrist shot blocked off the skate of George Holt. Poked back to the middle. Carolina receives, and Connor Haas sends it the length of the ice. And that's a good clear by Connor Haas to go 200 feet. Ryan Marker, stick handling around of Joe Osaka. 28 goals on the season for Marker, who cuts to the right side, goes to the corner, backhands it up for Kalinin. It eludes him and comes back out to center. A free clear for Carolina with 45 seconds to go on the power play. Intercepted, Klinetsky sends it back into Carolina, attacking ice. Receiving here for Delaware is Charlie Pens. Pens to the far side of the ice, Contrato. Back for Pins into the middle for Marker. Rolls off of his stick. Bacor moves it ahead for Thompson. It's two on one. Thompson feeds across. One timer. Great stop by Taylor. Oh, he flashes leather. Off the cheater pad of the glove. We play on as Aaron Taylor keeps it 2 2. 
Poked back by Evgeny Demon, intercepted. Another chance for Everett Thompson. One on one, cuts to the middle. His wrist shot blockered away by Taylor. Back behind the net, Delaware grabs possession of the puck. 10 seconds remaining in the power play. Through the middle, Marker off of his skate, taken by Dominic Fate. He'll retreat back into defensive ice as Carolina goes back to five on five. Panacek ahead toward Daniel Martin. Passes intercepted. Up in the air, Municello crosses the blue line. Works around a couple of defensemen who converge. Kenny takes out his own man. Dominic Fate deftly stick handling the puck here. Works around of Municello as Kenny reaches out after it. Intercepted, Municello coming back. Panacek receives for Carolina. Up toward Jay Kenny. He bangs bodies with Municello. Carolina's got it once more. This is Stan Bacor coming down the near side boards. Looks for Panacek in the middle. Pass is intercepted. Delaware lays it ahead. McIntosh through the middle of the ice. He turns it over. Bacor all the way ahead. Krivalovic is ahead of everybody as Taylor just shoots it out to the left wing side. Krivalovic sends it low for Panacek. Back for Krivalovic on the wing. Stops at the hash marks and feeds the points. Vlasov down low around the kick plate. Line held by Klinetsky. Intercepted by Delaware. They'll try to move it back out. Taken away by Carolina on the clearing attempt. Klinetsky finds Panacek in the left wing corner. Run into by Dunford. Picked up by Delaware. All the way ahead. A stretch look for McIntosh over top of his stick. Icing against the Thunder. The faceoff comes down into Carolina attacking ice. This is a very tough non-change for Delaware here. This is the second or third time they found themselves stuck on, a, on a, the bad end of an icing call. 15-11 to go in the third period. 2-2, Delaware and Carolina tied. All the scoring done in the first period. The last three goals were scored in a minute and 59 seconds between 3.38 and 39 seconds to go. Klonetsky steps into a wrist shot, blockered away by Taylor up into the meshing out of play, and now a full-scale change for Delaware. That's one where I'll turn the question to you. You're in a situation like that. Do you really look for the first shot you see if you're Carolina, or knowing you have a tired unit, do you try to pass the puck and cycle looking for an open space? I would think to move, cycle a little bit, and then, and then try and drive to the net, take a lot of traffic with you, make it difficult to play physical. McIntyre lined up behind of Connor Haas. He's tied up off the draw and ends up being forced to poke it forward to the point. Holt steps into a one-timer, goes wide of Nikita Sedenko, and is picked up by Osaka. He gives to Klinetsky, who steps into the left wing face-off circle, loses the puck to Anton Kalinin. Brings it ahead. Kalinin cuts to the middle, a low wrist shot, patted away by Polivka. Rebound taken by Christos Bormanis. He goes back for Kalinin. Intercepted by Carolina as Connor Haas moves it ahead. Haas missed 16 games from November 16th to last weekend as he was on loan to the Fayetteville Marksman. George Holt, hound dog from behind, turns it over to Bormanis. They're on side. Odd man rush. Out wide, Evgeny Demon lifts over top of Polivka. A good chance for Evgeny Demon as he tried to go back across the green but misses the net high. Connor Haas drives through three defensemen. Carolina holds possession. Bacor steps by his man. Holds for a wrister, testing the short side. Taylor pins himself on the goalpost to make the save. Everett Thompson feeds low for Joe Cangelosi. Cangelosi stick handling, looks up to the top, Bacor. A long shot tipped on the way through. Thompson goes to get the rebound back behind the net. A crafty pass on the forehand to Bacor, who misses on his shot wide. Christos Bormanis reaching after it. Dominic Fate holds the line for Carolina. They spin a shot back toward the net, misses off the inboards, wide on the glove side. Out at center. Kalinin reaching after it. Nikita Sedanko will help him. Loses the puck to Daniel Martin. He drives from the left wing side. Backhand pass through the middle. Nobody home for it. Everett Thompson goes to get the loose puck as he's worked on by Demon. Soccering deep is Dominic Fate. Finds Daniel Martin. Cuts to the middle of wrist. Shot blocked by the last man there. Sedanko. Rebound. Chance. Great stop by Aaron Taylor. Once again, guarding that blocker side goal post. He keeps it 2 2. Bormanis. Working around fate, Carolina holds. Krivalovic sidestepping his man who was Demon. Doing yeoman's work to feed it down low into the corner. Carolina getting reinforcements. Delaware chips it out to center. Good play by Jan Salak. Looks for everybody to touch up, and here comes Carolina. Into the middle, Panacek holds. Great stop by Taylor. Rebound loose, and he got that one too. Aaron Taylor on his head to keep it tied. I tell you what, Aaron Taylor has played absolutely superb this period. 
Carolina now dominating in the shot total category, 36 to 23 on the old Nick Williams shot counter. 12.54 to go third period. Aaron Taylor nearly single-handedly keeping this game tied to a piece. Oh, there's no doubt he absolutely is, Drew. Rolled low is chasing after the puck is Kieran Devine. Loses to Jan Salak. He cuts to the front. Gives out wide into the point. Kenny finds Blass off a low wrist shot. Slow balls through the middle of the ice. Carolina gets to it. This is Salak. Spins out of trouble with a pass to Benachik. His wrist shot never got to the net. Well defended by Charlie Pens to the point. Kenny, a wrist shot blocked on the way through. Taken by Salak. He gives to Panacic from the left wing faceoff circle. Stan Vlasov pinches in. Pass to the middle. Shot goes off of Pens. Charlie Pens Jr. doing yeoman's work to block a couple of shots in front of Taylor. Delaware under siege to the middle. Shot goes wide. Picked up by Krivalovic to the point. Kenny steps into a rising one-timer off the back glass. Picked up by Delaware. They'll bring it back through center. Carried in by Thomas Municello. Drops a pass to Marker. His slap shot splits his stick in half. And Carolina is able to get it back out to center as that stick splintered on the heavy swinging marker. Brennan Contrato works around of Jay Kenny, who forces him below the goal line. An off angle shot misses well wide. Picked up by Connor Haas, who feeds it ahead for Joe Osaka. He battles for the puck, loses to McIntosh as the two threes collide. Steve McIntyre running into McIntosh by the Delaware bench. Thunder will dump it in. Polivka reaches up to catch it. And Carolina will take a defensive zone draw with 11.28 to go in the third period. Good pace to this one. Delaware's defense bends but doesn't break there, Kelly Curl. You know, I really like this whistle by Polivka here. This is one of those where it's going to settle the game down a little bit. It felt a little back and forth, a little sloppy. Now the guys get to hit the reset button here. Well, Goomba, we're in for a good one here. It's been a whole lot of fun to see how this one has unfolded as Delaware has been as billed a team that continually fights and fights and fights through 60 minutes of hockey. And keep in mind, as we showed you back in the first period, Taylor Cutting comes back tomorrow. From the center ice faceoff circle, McIntosh dumps it back in. Polivka sets it on a tee. Carolina trying to break it out up the left wing side. Line held by Dunford. Backhands it right into Klinetsky. He feeds it ahead toward Daniel Martin. A rolling puck reaches the goal line. Icing called against the Thunderbirds. Three seconds over 11 minutes to go in this third period. Keep in mind, Carolina was never forced into an overtime situation till December 14th against Elmira, a 4-3 shootout loss. Since then, really, Carolina has played a handful of close games, a 2-1 win against Minner, an 8-6 win against Columbus, a pair of losses against Danbury, and the shootout win versus Menner. You know, you have to think that Carolina might have even been mollycoddled a little there through the beginning of the season where they had the time until the difficult part of the schedule pops in. Connor Haas driving down the left wing, cuts toward the net, shielded off. Taylor covers as Joe Osaka went reaching after it. He might have caught Taylor awkwardly as he's slow to get up. And Daniel DeCristofaro having words for Joe Osaka as Taylor will take his time getting readjusted here. I love what Taylor's doing here. You know, he's a very tough guy. And I'm sure that at this point in the game, he's looking for that little bit of an advantage. Maybe he gets a call there, maybe he doesn't. You know, it's a well, well played whistle there. I mean, it looked to be mostly in the hands. And uh, this is a very smart play by Taylor to slow this game down here. Well, and that's something that you've talked about with a lot of other goaltenders in this league. And the thing is, there's a lot of very good goaltenders. There's a lot of very young goaltenders. But keep in mind, there are a lot of teams that are hurting for good players in the net now. Five different FPHL goaltenders were loaned out to different places, four to the SPHL, one to the ECHL, and Nick Niedert. And now all of a sudden, you've got teams jockeying for position that don't have their starter. Right, and Aaron Taylor is, by definition, a veteran in this league. He's, he's a smart goalie. He's been through this ringer, so he knows what he's doing. 
as far as the pace of the game. And you watch him, you see it in his puck movement, right? We, you talked about it earlier, how he caught a puck and he moved it up ice quick. He knew that Carolina was in a change position, and he took advantage of it. Charlie Pence has been nothing but complimentary of his netminder, who has given him chances to win. Carolina does not with a faceoff strong. Here's Demon down the left wing side. Wrist shot swallowed by Polivka. Evgeny Demon turned on the Jets. And a good play by the Carolina netminder as it's his turn to make the big save. Yeah, a nice save there by Polivka to really swallow that, control that rebound. And uh, it's another one of those things where we talk about whistles late in the game, and that's just, that one's just as important. 10.34 to go, third period. These two teams were made tied 2-2. Two two. Big hit up at center as Sedenko gets dropped by Everett Thompson. Thunderbirds driving after it. We're going to get a penalty here as McIntyre goes hard into Kieran Devine, and we'll see a gathering of the clans in back of Aaron Taylor. We'll see how this one shakes out. That puck was touched so quickly after the arm went up. I'm not sure who the call is going to go against. Maybe, maybe penalties a, coming for both sides. Maybe a slash and a slash there. I'm not really sure. It'll be Evgeny Demon, but he's going to get Steve McIntyre to go to the box with him. Correct me if I'm wrong here, Kelly, because those aren't true matching minors. This should be a four-on-four -four situation. Uh, you would think so, but I know that there's a little bit of uh, discretionary calling there if they feel like they're situationally the same. Correct. So Brian Scully is having the conversation with Stan Vlasoff and Jay Kenny, two of the alternate captains for Carolina. The penalty against McIntyre is going to be roughing, slashing against Evgeny Demon. And we will skate four aside four. for the next two minutes. Yep, good call there, Drew. Good recognition on that. 10.20 to go in this third period. You know, I've got to give credit to Delaware. They're doing exactly what they needed to do. They've chipped away at this game. They're still in a 2-2 hockey game, you know, and they're they're continuing to push forward. I have a lot of respect for that. Thunderbirds are forced back out to center. Krivolavik handling the puck, works wide of Kalinin. Pressured by Dunford, has to spin it to the point where Kenny fires an awkward one-timer. It rolls down onto Taylor, and he'll cover. As Krivolavik was in the vicinity. And this is a game that has moved very quickly for the most part until we come grinding to a halt here. And it's whistle after whistle. Both of these goaltenders understanding the importance of patience. Taylor, who's played a handful more games in American professional hockey compared to Polivka, but both of these goaltenders going through an important maturing process in this contest. You know, even between North American hockey and European hockey, there's still that, that understanding of controlling the pace. And that's what both of these guys are trying to do at this point in the game. Anton Kalinin turns it over to Vlasov, who punches it back into attacking ice. Penns looks over his shoulder, sees Panacek, who moves it to the front. Chance for Carolina. Good stop by Taylor, and he covers the rebound. I'll tell you what, Aaron Taylor's had to make four or five saves on absolutely just broken plays. And, you know, Drew, it's funny that we talked about that right before this game. I was going to let you finish your comment there. No, no, you're good. I, I, <laughs> you and I were literally just talking about it, and we've seen it all night tonight. We'll step aside for this quick commercial break. 9.42 to go in the third period. Delaware 2, Carolina 2. We go down the stretch when we come back. to go 
in this third period, 2-2 between Carolina and Delaware. Tap that axe throwing, and Clemens is proud to be the first axe throwing facility in the triad. Come enjoy a fun, entertaining, and safe experience for everyone at Tap That Axe Throwing in Clemens. Had the opportunity to do that my second week here in Winston-Salem. I can honestly say it's like nothing else you've ever done, some of the most fun I've ever had. Face-off will be to the glove side of Aaron Taylor as soon as he gets set, taking a quick swig of Powerade. Taylor has been sterling in net for Delaware, and I would love to tell you what the shot total is, but the shot clock has gone out here in Winston-Salem, and thusly we are deprived of important information and I believe the officials are now working to get the penalties up on the board for McIntyre and Demon, as it looks like we've had another electrical blip in this building. You know, that's one of the things about having an old barn like this, Drew. You always have to deal with these kind of slight technical difficulties. And now you can see Scully telling uh, Andre that uh, the time in which his guys might be coming out here, if that's the scenario they have to go with. Oh, and there it is. Oh, there's one. And I can tell you this scoring system was installed same day the building opened. No center hung scoreboard here in Winston-Salem. Instead, there are dual long score clocks on either side. Great management by the staff in the scorer's box. Carolina wins the ensuing draw. Municello jumps in front of the route. Osaka finishes him into the boards by the Delaware bench, and George Holt gets to the puck for the Thunderbirds. Gives to Daniel Klonetsky back behind the net. It's 9.30 to go in this third period. Have not seen a goal since the 19-21 mark into the first period. Klonetsky retreats. Polivka setting a screen on Municello. As Daniel Klonetsky moves it up ice. Quickly, Osaka has the puck poked away from him by Contrato. Municello punished by Holt. Works into the middle. Municello holding, looking, wrist shot swallowed by Polivka. What patience there by Municello. Very smart play. Kept the puck on his forehand in the position where he could either shoot or make the pass. And he opted for the shot there. Probably the better of the choice down low. You had talked about the last time Polivka played, made a big breakaway save with a glove on Alex Morrow of Menor. Here he finds himself in a, situa in a situation where every save is going to be big, but it's later in the game now. Yeah, it's, it's going to be crucial for him to continue to keep pucks in front of him. Marker intercepts the puck from Everett Thompson, who stops on a dime, comes back to get it. Thompson from the right wing side, his shot blocked off of the stick of Dunford who gets the puck here. Dunford moves it ahead, stretches too far out of the reach of Anton Kalinin. Holding his Dominic fate, twirls and turns it over. Dunford punches it down low. Holding the puck is Anton Kalinin. Spins away from Dominic fate and works around him. Fate loses possession. Kalinin crashes to the ice and Carolina survives. Daniel Martin backhands to Panacic as McIntyre and Demon come out of the box. Backhanded up toward the front. Pass was blocked in the way through by Penns, who's had a noticeable defensive game. Sticks collide as the puck jumps up and into the Delaware bench. 8.06 to go in the third period. 2-2 Carolina and Delaware as the Thunderbirds chant begins to echo across the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex. We're actually very lucky that Dominic Fate didn't take a tripping penalty down there in the zone when he got tied up. 8.06 to go in the period. Joe Cangelosi's game-tying goal is the most recent, as we told you. Came at 19.21 into the first period. Since then, we've seen two goal posts hit and a handful of diamond caliber saves. De Cristofaro can't hold it. Sidenko gets it on the return trip. Carolina looking to intercept. They do at the point. Kenny comes near side to Vlasov. Shot through traffic. Goes off of Sedenko. Salat gets to it. Finds Panacic. He curls in the left wing corner. Up to the faceoff circle. Feeds Vlasov. Slap shot through traffic. Kicked out by Taylor. Rebound up to the point. Finish down low as Krivalovic comes back up to the right wing hash marks. 
Couple of Delaware Thunder players working on him. Kenny gets to it and flips it deep into the zone. Out wide, Driasi can't get it out. Kenny holds the line once more. Behind the net, Salak feeds Panatric on the right side, right by that goal post. Works to Salak, who cuts right and gives to Kenny at the point. cross eyes pass for Vlasov. Low wrister, tipped on the way through by Osaka. Rebound kicks out for Jan Salak. Seven minutes to go in the period. Salak feeds it down low toward Panacic. He's tied up by McIntosh. Sedenko comes in to help out. Carolina keeps possession. Osaka from the far side corner. Tries to wrap it around. Feeds it up to the point. Into a one-timer. Steps Glass off. Rebound. Loose. Taken down on the play was Panacic. Up to the point. Kenny. Low wrister. Kicked out by Taylor. Rebound corral by Masters as he skates ahead of center. Dumps it in, gaining the red line. And much needed rest for a tired Delaware unit with 6.30 to go in the period now, Kelly. You know, that was a great shift there by Carolina. They were able to force them, kind of keep them pinned in. I wish we'd got to see more of a change there. You know, maybe one guy at a time. Let's bring some fresh legs onto the ice and see if we can create a little more. Here's Brandon Contrato. Dumps it in, and he'll let Municello go chase it. Winning the foot raise is George Holt, who finds Klinetsky on the wing and out wide to the right side for Connor Haas. He crosses the blue line, stops at the top of the faceoff circle, feeds it low for George Holt. Big collision as McIntyre got tied up with Devine. Steve McIntyre took the worst of it. Klinetsky, backhand pass to McIntyre. Misses him on his backhand. Up to the point. Holt holds on his forehand, gives to Klinetsky left side. Low shot, tipped on the way through. Off the crossbar, rebound loose. Taylor's on top of it. Steve McIntyre with the deflection. He hits heavy metal, and neither team can seem to buy a goal with 5.52 to go in the third. You know, one of the things that McIntyre can do very well is he can reach towards pucks with that long stick, and he has a very big blade. If you ever get a chance to take a look at Steve McIntyre's stick, you should. That blade almost is, it's probably a half an inch thicker than most blades, and it's a big paddle, and it gives him the ability to tip pucks. Well, not only that, he's got a peculiar curve to it as well as it's very toey on the end of his stick. It is. It, a lot of guys play with that big toe where they can just kind of snap it from the end instead of having to ride the blade all the way down. Shot by Bacour. Hits a body in front. Daniel Martin gets to it for Carolina. Martin cuts toward the net. A bouncing puck rolls up the body of DeCristofaro. Settles back on his stick as he finds Bormanis. Unable to get it out. Fed back down the dasher to Cristofaro, will do it himself and survives to center where Cangelosi receives for Carolina. Interesting to see Cangelosi playing as a defenseman this shift. Dominic Fate steps ahead, turns it over to Dunford who works wide. This is Thompson looking to give down low, turns it over instead, could be an odd man rush. Bormanis with Kalinas trailing, moves it into the middle, tip just wide. Kalinan was waiting for it, Carolina clears it. And the faceoff will stay in Thunderbirds' defensive territory. Anton Kalinin had squared for the one-timer. That puck was tipped. And it nearly got by Polivka. Yeah, that was a bit of a dangerous one there. You know, anytime you're reaching for pucks and you don't feel like you're necessarily in control, bad things can happen. And that puck was not tipped on the way out. Andre Nitsch was lobbying for it. He will not get the call as Brian Scully tabs Daniel Martin for a delay of game penalty. 5.07 to go in the third period. Now Martin goes to the box. Sixth power play opportunity for the Delaware Thunder in this hockey game. And a chance to put some serious pressure on Carolina. Linesman Chris Kwong drops the puck and Carolina wins the draw finishing down 200 feet. Aaron Taylor out of his net to play the puck. Finds his defenseman who punches back for Charlie Penns. Carolina on the attack here shorthanded, but they'll have to get back quickly as Delaware sends an oscillating puck below the goal line. This will be icing on the Thunder just 21 seconds into the power play chance. You know, I hate to say it, but this is such a critical penalty for Delaware. They really need, they need to get some life out of this to get them through the rest of the game because so far Carolina has been dominant in this third. Faceoff will be to the blocker side of Taylor. 4.46 to go, third period, Delaware 2, Carolina 2. You know, I'd love to see Carolina maybe go to a little bit more of a passive neutralize here where they force Delaware to dump the puck to us in this situation so that we can clear it 200 with a little bit more time. Haas will take the draw for the Thunderbirds against Evgeny Demon of Delaware. 
Joe Osaka chases the puck into the left side corner. He's crunched by Contrado, who pulls out of the pile with it. Looks for Ryan Marker. A pass into the middle. Misses Demon. The support valve was there. It was Kalinan. Demon, pressured by Connor Haas, finds a way to get it out of his grasp. And now Delaware forced to retreat into defensive ice. Ryan Marker takes it across the red line. He'll try to do it himself. One-on-one -on -one with a wrist shot. Blocked off the stick of Klinetsky. Up into the mesh and out of play with a minute and 11 seconds to go in the Delaware man advantage. You know, sometimes when I watch these types of situations, you just sit here and shake your head. You know, Delaware knows they've got limited amount of time here, and they've already killed 49 seconds of their own power play with no real possession, which is unlike the other power plays they've had earlier in the game. Cangelosi will take the draw for the Thunderbirds. He'll go against Demons. Same power play unit out for Charlie Pence and company. Charlie Pins Jr. off the Delaware faceoff win, holds it on the near side, boards at the point. A cross ice pass. He hits Ryan Marker, who will quarterback this thing. A low wrist shot, stings Everett Thompson. Pins unleashes a slapper that misses wide on the blocker side of Polivka as it comes back out to center. Pins finds Kalinan. Four hands a pass intended for Dimon. Misses him well wide. Dominic Fate gets to it, winds up, and hammers a slapper all the way down, riding the kick plate where Aaron Taylor puts it on a tee behind the net. Just 40 seconds remaining in the man advantage for Delaware. Ryan Marker crosses the red line, works to the right side, lifts a pass over the diving defenseman in front. Polivka kicks it out. Good chance in front for Delaware. As Anton Kalini gets to the puck, it was Tommy Municello in front to the point. Demon feeds to Cristofaro, his slapper caught and held onto by Polivka with 21 seconds to go in the kill for Carolina. And Patrick Polivka will take that shot all day long. Two steps inside the blue line, no traffic, direct eyes on it. That is as routine as it gets for him. 3.28 to go in this final frame of regulation. Thunderbirds 2, Thunder 2. The same power play unit out for Delaware. Demon wins a critical draw to the point to Cristofaro. Sends it down low. Reaching after it is Evgeny Demon. Up to the point to Cristofaro. Steps into a slap shot. Tipped on the way through. Off the back glass. Carolina gets to it. This is Blasov. Feeds it ahead for Panacic. He's one-on-one -on -one with Krivolovic trailing. Feeds it across. Krivolovic. Great stop by Taylor. Takes it right in the Viking crest on the front of the uniform. We stay tied. You know, if you had to break down Aaron Taylor's saves, you have to say that that one could be the most timely but it's hard to put a pin on which one's been the most important for him tonight. That is the 49th save of the night for Aaron Taylor. Three seconds remaining in the penalty to Daniel Martin. And Carolina will go six for six on the kill. Krivolovic drives to the front, tries the five hole. Taylor shuts it down and covers the second chance opportunity. 3.02 to go in the third period. 2-2, Delaware and Carolina playing a classic here in Winston-Salem. Panacha, Krivolovic, Salak, the forward unit for Carolina. Kenny and Vlasov on defense. McIntosh kicked out of the face-off circle for the Thunder. Brendan Contrato has to step in to take the draw. Krivolovic wins it. Carolina. Working in the slot, Krivolovic goes to the right wing corner to pick it up to Kenny. A wrist shot blocked immediately off of the stick of Contrado. Into the left wing corner. Salak pulls it out on his backhand, stops behind the net. Curls to his forehand side, shucks off a body check, stops at the hash marks. Now feeds it down for Krivolovic, who spins out of trouble and feeds the point blast off. Down the near boards to Salak. Into the middle, Salak looking for shooting room. Good play by Kieran Devine, who never gave him any. Up to Eric Masters. This goes off of Vlasov and out of play with 2.28 to go in the third period. You know, something I don't know if we've talked about or not uh, for the, the fans at home getting to watch the game, Stan Vlasov is so good about jumping in and bailing out and jumping in and bailing out. And he'll make it down to the top of the circles, and then as soon as he realizes the lane's closed, he peels out immediately and comes back to the blue line but he only does it when he has a third man high and support to allow him to jump. Stan Vlasov celebrated his 30th birthday yesterday. Native of St. Petersburg, Russia. This one's cleared in by McIntyre. Goes off the edge of the glass and out of play. And I believe because it caught the glass, that is going to save McIntyre from going to the box. Well, Drew, 
is it a penalty in neutral ice as well? Or is it only defensive zone? It's a good question. I, I do know the thing about the glass. We'll get our research team on that for the ECHL rule book. Here's Connor Haas, stops at the blue line, dumps it back in. Two minutes to go in the third period, 2-2 as McIntyre feeds it down low for Joe Osaka. Osaka up to the point for Holt, a long wrist shot, bounces toward the net, taken away. Kalinin tries to work around Holt, Holt chops it down. Carolina will take it at center. Daniel Klinetsky skates it ahead himself. He'll work around of Evgeny Demon. Cuts to the left, fires a low shot that goes off the skate of Charlie Penns. Back toward the front. Taylor blocked the pass with his goal paddle. On the left wing side, Delaware feeds it ahead toward Ryan Marker. George Holt blows the tire, gets back up. No harm done. Marker gets to the puck. He's pinned there by George Holt. Under 90 seconds to go in this game. A backhand pass to the middle. Kalinin shot. Polivka says no and gives no rebound. No, I loved Polivka's depth there, Drew. If you noticed, as soon as that puck made it up, he took one hard C cut. He was right on the top of his crease, challenging the shooter. Love to see that. The Carolina Thunderbirds looking for win number 22 of the season. They have not taken six points in a weekend since defeating Battle Creek on back-to-back -back occasions. December 27th and 28th, Everett Thompson knocked off of his feet as Delaware dumps it back in. Bacor goes behind his net to field it. 70 seconds remaining in the third period. We remain tied 2-2. Two two. A headman look, Cangelosi. Now to Daniel Martin, crossing the blue line of the left wing side. Sends a pass to the middle. Aaron Taylor sticks it up into the crowd with 59 seconds to go in regulation play. That's a smart shot there by, by Daniel Martin. He kind of put that on that far pad. Aaron Taylor, way to respond by putting that over the glass. Delaware has yet to play a game that has gone into overtime this year. Carolina has played a pair of them. Most recently, one week ago, a shootout win versus Menor. The Thunderbirds are 1-1 one one in extra hockey. You know, I give a lot of credit to the Thunder. They've done a much better job of pushing up this period. Face-off is won by Carolina. Dumped in as Krivalovic will chase it. Gets it and works around McIntosh. Jan Krivalovic feeds it up to the point. Bacor looks for Vlasov, who dumps it in. Panacic collects on his forehand. Cuts toward the front. Feeds Bacor, winds and fires, a rising slapper stopped by Taylor as the rebound kicked out just beside the goal crease. To the top, Panacic, winds and fires, misses up top. Salak picks up the puck, feeds Bacor. He's just forced to dump it down low. Krivalovic walks it back to Bacor. He'll fill in the lane from the right wing corner. An awkward shot stopped by Taylor. Delaware clears. This puck grows legs. It's icing, and it will. Just 11 seconds to go in the third period as Carolina will get another crack at it here in regulation. You know, if, if I'm in this situation, I'm thinking about possibly using my time out here. Your, your line is tired. They're exhausted. 11 seconds is more than enough time for Carolina to put the puck in the net. Steve McIntyre will lead the group out of the pile for Carolina. No official timeout called as of yet. Andre Nitsch is perched up on his bench. And there and now it is. he's going to call it. Yep, and there it is. Smart play. Let it drag on as long as you can, then call it. I mean, I, I hate to say it, Drew, but you almost have to in this situation. That line had been on the ice for at least a minute and change. Well, Aaron Taylor has turned in a gem of a performance. 52 saves in this game. Patrick Polivka, no slouch with 26 of his own. We have not seen a goal scored since Joe Cangelosi tied the game for Carolina at the 1921 mark into the first period. Since then, we've seen three goal posts hit and a handful of spectacular saves on both sides of this matchup. Yeah, I'm going to come back to the one basically right out of the gate where Joe Cangelosi put one on the bottom side of the crossbar and it just didn't happen to find the way into the back of the net. Delaware breaks the huddle first. Aaron Taylor will tend to his glove side on the ensuing draw. 11 seconds to go in the third period. Carolina 2, Delaware 2, and only the third all-time meeting between these two franchises. You would have to think, if, you're, if I'm Carolina, I'm looking for a push here. 
maybe even setting up. Ah. See, I might have gone with Hanselak towards the inside there just to drive him towards the nut. McIntyre pokes it back for Bacor. Just five seconds to go. Long shot. They scored! Stan Bacor with a seeing eye wrister. Carolina has the lead with just six seconds to go. What a shot by Stan Bacor. One of the guys we talk about all the time, not talking about enough. And he's giving us a reason right now. Aaron Taylor still on his knees in the goal crease. Can't believe it. Carolina has the lead with just six ticks to go. It doesn't get any better than that for an FPHL rookie defenseman in Stan Bacor. Face off from center, tied up off the draw. Carolina throws it deep, and I believe that tickled the meshing and went out of play, it did. Face off will occur again from center as this crowd is on its feet. Just two seconds to go. The Carolina Thunderbirds have ripped three points away from the Delaware Thunder. Horn sounds, and Carolina wins. What a shot by Stan Bacor. He got that, took one step, and just put it low and hard onto net. Now, you and I both know that shot wasn't even intended to go in. That was intended to be a rebound in front, and it just happened to find its way. On the 55th shot of the night, the Carolina Thunderbirds break through the Aaron Taylor wall and wrestle three points away from the Delaware Thunder. Your final, Carolina three, Delaware two, as Carolina gets their 13th goal of the season in game-winning fashion with under a minute to go in a period. Stan Bacor is the hero, Hugh Neil Diamond. What an outstanding hockey game we just witnessed, Kelly Curl. Yeah, that was a great game. Uh, top to bottom there, both teams, very hard fought. You know, Delaware came into this building and played very well tonight. They pushed. I think when they go back and they they kind of review the game for themselves, I think the moment they're going to hold on to are some of the pucks that didn't get out of the defensive zone. That'll do it for us here in Winston-Salem. The final score, the Carolina Thunderbirds 3, the Delaware Thunder 2. Carolina improves to 22-3, 1-1, as they are now just one point shy of 70 on the season. Delaware falls to 8-18, 0-0. They remain at 24 standings points in what will undoubtedly be a gut-wrenching loss for the Delaware Thunder. Our next broadcast will be tomorrow night. The Honda Can-Am.